Hello, let's take a look at a newer um, deck. It came out this year from Il Meningello. Um, you know, um, Osvaldo, um, uh, Osvaldo Gazzi um, died last year. Was it last year? Or it, it, it probably was last year, I forget. Maybe it was uh, this year, and I think it was last year. Anyway, I, w I was scared that Bill Meningello would just sort of disappear, and nothing would, you know, nothing would uh, would would be out. But uh, Christina uh, Dorsini uh, kind of picked up things, and this is the first deck without um, uh, Il, Il Maestro, um, and it's the SD uh, tarot cards, and it's a very um, broken deck. It's not even all the trumps, not even all the minors. It's only uh, 16 cards. So Christina uh, wrote the little book. I have this in English. It came with it. It's a set. And then you get the, um, the, the box with the cards. And this looks just like the older decks. And I love how the, um, the bottom was the uh, burning was brought back with that same font that harkens back to uh, pre like early 2000s um, uh, Il Manigello decks um, I love that burn sfumato feature um, and the stamp the wax stamp is a bit updated now it's metallic and it is not as brittle it's sort of more plasticky so those are some of the newer things. This is a lovely small coffin box. Um, there's the coffin. I love this this paper that's used. Very heavy lead. And the cards were wrapped in here, in like this. Um, and then the, the seal, uh, a bigger, is it the same seal? No, it's a bigger uh, Il Meningello seal is there. And it's sort of in a rubbery wax, just like the one on the front. So you can see it's a different size. I love their logo. Um, and here's the book that came with it, which talks about the, the research that uh, Christina did with the cards. And these are from the um, Yale Library, the Bernicke um, uh, Rare Book and Manuscript Library. Um, from Yale. And here is the little piece of paper that's always in the bottom. This one it's in Italian and English in a different font, talking about imperfections. This is um, 15th century, only 200 of these, and this is number 49 of 200. The backs of these are sort of a bubbly reddish like a coating, uncoated cards, the traditional card stock that Il Meningello uses, the sort of, I, I like to think of it as like a, a lighter, airier card stock, hard, but light. Um, so it's numbered there. Let's look at the cards. So here is the Fool. And here, uh, this one is interesting. The research that Christina did, it goes really in depth in the book, which is, it's lovely to have as a companion. Um, there are three figures here. She talks about the unicorn um, and some of the um, artistic influences in the region and how this would have affected the um, tarot and why this was created, which I appreciate. Since this is a, the SD tarot I've never heard of, so she was kind of, finding something and bringing it to light, which I think is Il Meningello is uh, really wonderful at. Here is, of course, the magician. This one uh, has two kids, two children there. He's got, um, and these are, um, would have had gilding, golden gilding on there. Um, and uh, the cards are have these lovely reddish colors, very red, heavy. Um, we have the table there, we have the sort of shell game that's going on, and the cards being, being entertained by the magician. 
And this one, I wasn't sure if this was, I believe this was the, the Pope card. Basically, the, the hand gesture tells me that, and the papal crown. And if I was, let me look. I'll put this there. What it says about Il Papa. Yeah, the Pope. And it says, a modest throne, seated right, wears gloves in his left hand. Oh. Holds what appears to be a cup, or rather, a golden priestly chalice. Golden circle, the gloves, long beard, aquiline nose. Hmm. He carries neither the Bible, nor keys, nor rods. The uh, next one is Temperance. Again, it's sort of, um, the cards are somewhat, uh, they're interesting depictions, crude, crude, almost crude, but the backgrounds do share similarities with um, backgrounds of the uh, Visconti decks. The star. So this one is the guy's face. His head is turned up. It looks like almost like a, a limpet pointing at the, their hands are making sort of a sexton. There's a star chart he's holding with the moon, but he's looking at the star. Um, an intriguing uh, motif there. Uh, it's called the stars. Um, arcane number 17, eight pointed star. presence of the two figures, one male, one female. It's female, I guess, because of the long hair. I didn't notice that. Star of fertility connected to the octagon. In fact, polygon arises from the union of two intersecting squares called double quaternary. Hmm. That's interesting. And the next one is... Uh, the moon, the moon? It is. It's the moon. So the cards are reproduced in the book like this. For another view, they're slightly enlarged. So we have the moon, and he's got his compass, his sextant, looking at the moon. And I, I really feel with the turban and all, some um, Middle Eastern influence on this, because they were um, known to be... Um, brilliant astrologers. Whenever you see like um, a lot of uh, like medieval things, the vizier is usually uh, of Arab descent, Arabian, and um, is, is, is wise and looks at the stars and, and, and counsels the royalty in, in the heavens and what is a um, auspicious day or not. Um, let's see. The, du the Urbino Ducal Palace. Palace. The word ducal is, of course, uh, similar to duchy. Um, the sun. Oh, we get the, all the celestial cards. The guy is in a probably a cave. Two men, one young. The young man, probably Alexander the Great, Diogenes of Sinope. That's probably him, the ancient Greek philosopher. Hmm. This must be the world, which is a depiction of sort of a mini world, is also in Visconti di Modroni. Um, doesn't really say. It's just a mini world, and it really because there's no buildings that, that define that. You don't see uh, land uh, landmarks. I love the. That's an eagle. Cherub. And here we have court cards or minor minor arcana. Um, this one says the Knight of Wands is first. There he is, Knight of Wands. 
And the next one is, oh, this one, okay. Uh, Jack of Wands or the uh, page. Botanical elements are present. Hmm. That it looks like a king. Yes, king of wands. It's hard to see. Yeah, but to me, it would have been swords or wands, but it looks like wands. The lilies of France are depicted. You can see some definite detail here that, that has just been lost to the ages, but it's these were very detailed cards. Ah, the Queen of Cups. Oh, this says King of Coins. These must be out of order. And this is how I got them. There we go. King of Coins. Or Pentacles. Let's see. Queen of Cups is next. Oh, that's not Queen of Cups. There she is. Queen of Cups. I always think of this as a pregnancy card. Um, beige, dressed. Uh, and she has a baton in her other hand. And the next card in the book is the Knight of Swords. There we are. So the sword, you can see the hilt there very clearly. Someone's being trampled. It celebrates the origins of the Esti family. The image could perhaps refer to the chivalrous poem by Matteo Maria Buiardo or Alendo Animorato in 1483, and the character of Ruggiero. Hmm. See, Christina does a lot of research. As a librarian, I respect that. Here we have the Queen of Swords. She has a shield. The, also in the shield we can see the white lilies and the blue background and the silver eagle. They're all Esti family symbols. Yeah, the king of swords. Embellished armor. He holds the uh, quadripartite. Partite shield. The discoloration unfortunately does not allow us to glimpse anything. It probably because it was silver, and it probably had um, heraldic uh, meaning on it. And that is it. That is the deck. A little tiny deck. Lovely deck. Lovely little cards. I'll put it back in here. A little coffin lid. Poof. And there we go. That is the uh, SD Tarot cards. Triumph cards for Ercole de l'Este. So I thought I would share them. I just got them today. Um, after them being delayed, I'd ordered them in September, but something had happened in shipping. So I got them this week. Anyway, thanks for watching.